Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship on this January 31st, the last Sunday in the first month of this year, 2021. It is good to be with you wherever we might be gathered together to worship God with our brothers and sisters. We begin our worship today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, called to be part of the church united together. And we do so with our call to worship made up of a number of different worship texts that we can join together uh, and invoking the name of our God with one another. So let's read this with, uh, with each other. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing that comes from heaven, who knew you and chose you before the world began, who loves you so much that he calls you his own children, who has brought you from darkness into light and filled you with his glorious power, who has prepared an inheritance for you that will never spoil or fade, who encourages and strengthens you in every good deed and word, who comforts you in your troubles so that you can comfort others. This is our God, the ultimate source of all things and the one for whom we live. Let's worship God together. And we begin by singing our opening song, You're worthy of my praise. Let us join together in prayer. Lord of the Sabbath, your followers were told not to work on the Sabbath, and yet they boldly plucked grain to show that you are Lord of all. The world tells us not to rest on the Sabbath. Show us how to rest boldly, rejecting conventions that go against your will, and instead praying and resting as you did up on the mountain for the glory of your word and work, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Your love found me, brought my 
As we take a moment to collect our offering, there are a number of ways you can do that. Uh, of course, you can use Rebel Give, our giving platform that's available on the website. Uh, you can also write a check, send it in, or drop it off uh, at the preschool door. You can leave it with Joan. We are always grateful uh, for the gifts that you give to support God's ministry, both here at Calvary and wherever you might happen to be, in all of the ways that we are part of this kingdom that God is building. building. Uh, it could not happen without the way that you, uh, you make use of your time and your talents and your efforts to continue the work that Christ is calling us to. So thank you so much for all the ways you do that. Uh, this is, uh, as we are and still in January, our second offering partner is still Churches United for this final Sunday. You can still give to, uh, to, that, uh, to that cause uh, through our website or, again, write a check with second offering partner Churches United uh, and help them in their work as well. A couple other announcements. Today is our annual meeting uh, that will be happening after our worship service, our drive-in worship service at Calvary. Uh, we are having communion uh, for the final worship service of the month at that drive-in, so if you'd like to partake in that, feel free to join us at 1 o'clock. The annual meeting will be beginning directly following the service. We also are going to be reading a book together as a congregation for Lent. We're going to be reading The Universal Christ by Richard Rohr. So if you'd like to participate in that, feel free to put an order in for that book, and we look forward to uh, discussing that text with one another. It should be a, uh, a good and thought-provoking conversation. I think that's all of my announcements today, so let us continue with our offertory prayer. Generous God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have shown us what it means to love, and you call us to follow your example, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Continue to write your law of love on our hearts. Give us an unwavering passion for justice and a tenacious faith that will not rest until the hungry are fed, the oppressed find relief, and the outsider finds a welcome. Amen. We'll read responsibly our psalm for the day. It comes from Psalm 92. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To, to declare, declare your steadfast love in the morning and, morning and your faithfulness, faithfulness by night. night. To the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For, for you, O Lord, Lord, have made me glad by your work. work. At, At the, the works, works of your hands, I sing, sing for, for joy. joy. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like the cedar in Lebanon. They, they are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our, of our God. God. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap. Showing, showing that, that the Lord is upright. He, he is my rock and, and there is no unrighteousness in him. him. Our gospel reading today is from Luke chapter 6, verses 1 through 16. One Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked some heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, 
which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath, so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though he knew what they were thinking, he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come and stand here. He got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to destroy it? After looking around at all of them, he said to them, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. Now during those days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose twelve of them, whom he also named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Ophias, and Simon, who is called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. This ends the reading. In Jewish culture, days begin in the evening with the setting of the sun. We see this in Genesis 1 with the repetition of, and there was evening, and there was morning. The day begins with rest. We start by settling down and going to sleep. The Jewish day seems to begin with nothing at all. It begins with rest. The Hebrew evening and morning sequence conditions us to the rhythms of grace. We go to sleep and God begins his work. This understanding of time is totally different than the way those of us who measure our days by our own efforts and accomplishments. And then if we have time, we rest. Though our bodies, our minds, and our souls, which are always intertwined, do need rest. About one-third of our lives are spent in sleep. Through these collective years of rest, God is at work in us and in the world, redeeming, healing, and giving grace. Each night when we yield to sleep, we practice letting go of our reliance on self-effort and abiding in the good grace of our Creator. Thus, embracing sleep is not only a confession of our limits, It is also a joyful confession of God's limitless care of us. And so we begin our conversation on the Sabbath, which is a day of rest every week. For Jewish people, the Sabbath is considered Friday night through Saturday night. But for Christians, Sabbath is considered the day of Sunday. Our scripture reading today talks about two different Sabbath days. The first one, Jesus' disciples were found eating. They were seen eating because they were hungry. But the Pharisee people disapproved and asked Jesus about it. The Pharisees were the liberal mainline Protestants of first century Judaism. The Pharisees have long been misinterpreted as Jewish leaders who are stiff and legalistic in their opposition to Jesus and his activities. And then there are those of us today in our post-Christian world. So many people disregard this text. So many people don't take a day of rest for the Sabbath. So some of us may read this text and say, so what? So what if Jesus' disciples were found eating on the Sabbath? We go to the grocery store to our child's sporting events, we clean the house and write our school papers on the day that we know is meant to be Sabbath. 
So why is this scripture important, and why are we talking about it? This is the opposite of how the Pharisees felt about Jesus allowing his disciples to eat on the Sabbath. They traditionally took a full day of rest every week. Both valid points of view, both very different points of view. Jesus calls himself the Son of Man and Lord, which is Jesus claiming authority over the Sabbath. This is Jesus saying that God is in, is in control, even on the Sabbath. Yes, we need a day of rest, but the hungry need to be fed too, even on the Sabbath. So if someone is in need on your Sabbath day, which you may or may not observe, that's a conversation between you and God, don't walk on by just because you're on Sabbath. Help them, because food insecurity for some is real. Rest on the Sabbath, yes, but it's okay to have exceptions. It's okay to have change. Departing from the Sabbath is not bad, especially if someone needs help. Don't think twice. If you're able, just help them, because someday the tables might turn and you might be the one in need of help. The second Sabbath story is about when Jesus was seen healing a man's withered hand. And the Pharisees again disapproved and spoke to Jesus about it. Jesus explained that helping someone feel better is important, regardless of what day it is. This does not mean that Jesus disregards the Sabbath. He doesn't think it's important. Yeah, he actually does. He does believe it's important. It just shows that if the person is hurt, help him. Heal him. Why allow the person to feel uncomfortable for one more day? The Pharisees didn't understand this. They thought if the person is hurt but not dying, then what's one more day? You can heal him tomorrow when the Sabbath is over. Luke, the author of this gospel, did not include these two stories about Jesus and the Sabbath to make the Pharisees look bad. He included the stories because Sabbath observance was an issue for the early church. The early church considered the scriptures, which included the commandment to keep the Sabbath, to be its scriptures. Keeping the Sabbath was first given in Exodus 20 and is grounded in the creation story of Genesis where God rested on the seventh day and blessed it. Therefore, keeping the Sabbath was extremely important to the early church. I believe that Luke, but by Luke sharing these two stories with us, we can understand the early church and the Pharisees a little bit better. And I think it's important to understand some of our church history. And this is one way to do it. We can understand through them how important the Sabbath is, which is God's gift to us, a day of rest. But Jesus is also showing us that change is important too, even if it's on our day of rest. The hard part is that change is always disruptive, and disruption is always hard. Here in 2020 and 2021, we've had a very difficult year of change. It's been a year of difficult disruption. For us, for this time, change was not a choice. Change was not simple, and the change was uninvited into our households and into our communities. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed all of our lives. In faith communities, initially, as church leaders, we were like, how do we keep worship and ministry going when we can't gather together as one body in the name of Christ in the ways that we've always done? What now? Different congregations have done different things. Some have returned to in-person worship and then had to revert back to online and are now in, in person again. Others continue to be in online worship only Lots of changes. The question now becomes, what does the future hold? Discerning is still taking place. 
What changes that have been made will stay altered forever? What, if anything, will resume, re resume back to some sort of normalcy? When can we gather together again as we once did? All I know is I feel we cannot rush the process, or serving God's purpose may be lost. So we read the scripture stories again and again. The scripture stories today are about Jesus responding to accusations about what he has done or what he has let other people done on the Sabbath. And we are again reminded that they do relate to us today, just in different ways. We have different stories, we have different examples nowadays, but the, the change is present. It's still a different to our tradition than we're used to. And for some, that can be really uncomfortable. But they tell us the scriptures, they tell us and convince us and show us that there have been disruptions for centuries. Sometimes the way that we've always done things can no longer be the way. There are moments of change and disruption. But Jesus is always making good in the world. He is always finding a way with the changes to make the world a brighter place. And he allows changes to the Sabbath because he has the authority to do so. And also by showing us, all of us, first century people all the way to us today, that a huge part of our lives is to provide for our neighbors, love ourselves, love our neighbors, right? So even during the unwanted change that is upon us, even during this really hard pandemic, be like Jesus, help our neighbors, be the light in the darkness, even on the Sabbath. But don't forget to rest. You know, maybe Sabbath for you can't be Sunday. Maybe Sabbath for you is on Tuesday or some other day of the week. Or maybe you don't have a full day and you just have little bits of every day that you can call your Sabbath. But whatever day or time you have during the week, when you're able to have some downtime, please take it. Because the Sabbath is a gift from God. It is meant for renewal and rest. God wants us to live lives that are holy and have prayer time and to provide for us so we can help others who are in need. But God also really needs us to get our rest, have sufficient rest. So, Perhaps your Sabbath is one day during the week or bits and pieces of every day. But no matter what, I really hope that if nothing else, you'll enjoy a really good night of sleep each and every night. So at the end of every day, we lie in our beds. By a grace we do not control, we yield to sleep. We rest. Our muscles release, our jaw unclenches, it slacks. We are exposed and weak. God has called us beloved and gives us his beloved sleep, our rest. cross of grief or pain leave to thy God to order and provide in every change he faithful will remain be still my soul thy best thy heavenly friend through thorny ways leads to a joyful end be still my soul thy god doth undertake to guide the future as he has the past thy hope thy confidence let not 
nothing shake all now mysterious shall be bright at last be still my soul the waves and winds still know his voice who ruled them while he dwelt below Let's now unite our voices with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now turn our hearts and minds to the power of prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, we are so grateful that you created the Sabbath the day of rest. And you modeled for us in the beginning of creation that even you rested on the seventh day. And you allow us to rest in you, to have complete trust and hope in you. That it, every day we can find respite and Sabbath in you. You have called it good and you have blessed this day. So help us to rest in you and be a blessing to others in every way we possibly can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for our world today. 
We pray for all those places torn apart by war or violence, those who are struggling with preventable diseases, those who are in need of basic things like food and water and shelter. And we ask God for your word to spread throughout all the world so all may know of your great love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, today we pray for churches everywhere, for all the churches that gather to worship and praise you, to continue to claim you as our Lord. We specifically pray today for Calvary Lutheran Church, for our staff, for our preschool, and today for our annual meeting. May you continue to inspire us with new vision, mission, and ministry goals so that we can be the hands and feet of Christ here in our community and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, God, we open ourselves up to your healing. And just like the man in the story, we receive your healing whenever you send it. May we open our ears, our eyes, our voices, and all of our being to receive your healing in the ways that it comes. We thank you for sending your healing through smiles, through medicine, and through fellowship. We pray for all those who are struggling with COVID-19, with cancer, with illnesses, with abuse, those who are feeling isolated and depressed. We ask God that you hear our cries for those that we know around us and those around the world who are in need of healing today. May your healing come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And today, God, we give thanks for the many blessings you give us in our lives. We thank you for birthdays and anniversaries celebrated this week in our community of faith. We thank you for this new year, new hope, new vaccines. And we ask, God, that you hear us as we turn to you and give you thanks and praise for the many blessings that we see in our lives. You are the giver of all good things, and we give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God in death does not take a holiday, and we pray again today for the family of Charles Kosivi, who we laid to rest yesterday. Continue to grant his family peace and hope and the gift and promise of the resurrection, and be with us as we continue his legacy of music and loving you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these prayers prayed out loud, God, in the silence of our hearts, we lift before you like incense. Help us to turn on our listening ears to be guided by you in our week of mission and ministry. And now, Lord, hear us as we unite our voices sharing the prayer you taught your children to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Next week, we skip ahead to Luke 7, hearing about uh, Jesus is in the raising people uh, business. And we hear a little bit about that. And now receive this benediction. God Almighty, send your light and truth to keep you all the days of your life. The hand of God protect you. The holy angels accompany you. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and walk in the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.
take me as you find me all my fears and failures fill my life again i give my life to follow everything i believe in 